Welcome to On Air with Cash. Our guest today began acting and modeling at age four. His breakthrough role was as Butch the Bully in the Cool Cat movies with Eric Estrada and Vivica A. Fox. He has been nominated two times for the Young Entertainer Awards for Cool Cat and his reoccurring role on Fox's hit drama 911 with Angela Bassett. At age 18, he became the CEO of his own production company, Penny Arcade Pictures. Please welcome Connor Dean. Thank you for having me. What's been going on? So I've been like taking advantage of the working from home, trying to get my work done. I, I'm happy because I'm graduating actually tomorrow. So congratulations. I, I, thank you. I'm happy because we actually have a ceremony. It was a little debate between that. So after that, I got some stuff going on. I got some scripts that I'm writing. I'm going to work with my brother with our production company and try to produce some things under that. So yeah, I've been, I've been doing a lot lately. You're actually going to have an official ceremony for your graduation? Yeah, it's uh, at COC, I believe. Okay. So it's, like, it's a good outdoor like space, so it should be good. That's incredible. So tell me about uh, Penny Arcade Productions. How did this come about? You, you founded it when you were 18? Yeah, so me and my brother, because we love to do acting, he started doing what I'm doing with the auditions, like going to that, and then he decided that he actually likes doing stuff behind the camera. So he went to film school, he's writing scripts, like he's learning all that. And then we decided that, you know, we're already doing it. Let's make a production company. Let's make so these scripts that we're writing so we can actually produce them. So we decided to make a, our own production company and it's named after our named, um, hey, we called him Papa Penny. So that's why we called it Penny Arcade Pictures. So we did a little nod to him and, you know, I feel like we're going to do a lot under it. That is amazing. And what are some of your passion projects? Like what are, what's the genre you love doing the most? So I like, I've been writing some stuff for like horror because I'm, I'm a big fan of horror movies. Like I, I watch a lot of them during Halloween. That's my, my time at midnight, just go and just watch the a whole marathon. Yeah. And then I've also been doing like uh, some animated, like writing some animated stuff. No, I, I'm like you and I'm going to totally pull a line out of scream. What's your favorite scary movie? Ooh, because I love the Halloween like saga. I, I have always adorned that. And probably I got to say my, my favorite is the original Halloween. That's it's such a classic. And I love the Scream, like the Scream franchise, but I feel like it all started with Halloween, that little slasher movie. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you know, this start, you know, Jamie, like, I mean, you even go back to like the Hitchcock Erica, her mother being in Psycho, and then you have yeah. two generations later, she's, she's like one of the originals, Jamie Lee Curtis is one of the original Scream Queens. And nothing beats, I know the first two Halloween movies, especially, I mean, just the, and it's the thing too, I, what I like about the original is just there's so much like real, there's just so much suspense. I mean, I'm not a, a fan of like slasher gore, but it's just, yeah. the, it, it's, it's, it's like the shining. It's just, you look at things, it, it's like, it's just scary because it's so quiet. And then when Michael comes out, it's just boom. It was like that one scene where you saw how he slowly got up in the background, but she oh. doesn't see him. Like that was the perfect, like he's right behind you moment. And it was, it, Halloween was more of like a suspenseful thing, just like uh, Jordan Peele's Us. That was a good one. And Get Out. Like, oh, I, I feel like these type of movies are really cool when you don't need those jump scares or you don't need a bunch of gore to make a good movie, uh, a horror movie. You just need that suspense there. No, we have similar interests. I totally, I totally <laughs> agree with that. And it was, um, it was interesting because even like the, sc the, the screen movies, especially for like my generation, that was like, we were always watching those on Halloween and it was just always like, or, or even just, I mean, those were so popular during, you know, like the 2000s yeah, they were, and everything. They were really good. They're so good. And it was such a, I mean, I just love even like with a Jamie Kennedy's character, he's just always saying there's like a formula for surviving a horror movie. So I think like in the nineties, a lot of things were, they were kind of pointing out different tropes or cliches and everything, which yeah. was, which even added to the humor of it. So it was, yeah, no, those are just, I just have fond memories. Just, you know, we, I mean, those were like our sleepover, you know, order a pizza and, have your friends over and watch the Scream movies and the Halloween movies. Scream was like the mo the horror movie that made fun of horror movies. Exactly. Like, right, like saying, oh, there's a certain rhythm to the horror movies. Yeah. And then it was like, it was the one movie that had a famous actor on it, like on the poster that died really quick. And I feel like that's also what got people. 
That was, oh, definitely. I mean, because yeah. when, you know, she was the most featured actress, Drew Barrymore's Drew Barrymore, but you, I totally thought she was going to be, I know it's been what, like 25 years, but spoiler alerts for anyone who hasn't seen screen in the last 25 years, it's uh, some, something goes down in the first 10 minutes of the movie. I mean, that's when the famous line, what's your scary movie came. Oh yeah. That it was, it was a really cool thing because that's when the movie was just like, hi, you, you thought that she was going to be the main character, but. Yes. Oh, no, I, I actually, I remember the reaction. I was with some, I think we were probably 12 or 13 when we first saw the movie. And so we had a bunch of our friends. I think we actually had to sneak it or something because we were, we were young and our parents. Were, so anyway, we had like a group of our friends and I just remember that first line, we're watching it and that first line of, I want to know who I'm looking at. And everyone, we, we all just freak. Oh, and then it was that creeped everyone out. And then of course what happens and then the, but yeah, the whole movie was so entertaining and such a classic. Yeah, they, it, 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 I like movies like that. They keep you entertained from the very beginning. Like I get some movies that have to have that like story in the middle that may not be as like entertaining, but I love the movies that from the beginning to the end just keep you entertained the entire time. And that's what that movie did for me. Exactly. Oh, well put. Yeah. So your breakthrough role was as Butch the Bully in the Cool Cat movies. And this is a character you've actually mentioned in interviews, like people associated you with that with that character. Yeah, they they saw me as that character, and they all thought that I'm like this big macho bully. But in reality, I'm just like I'm a really nice kid. Like I don't bully anyone. I'm not. Oh, you're the nicest complete. guy I know. So I was just I, was, I mean for me because I know you, but it was just I was I understand what that's like when you play a character and then people associate you with a with a role like yeah. that. Because I'm like the complete opposite of like the, that personality, but it's funny because I like to play those characters that are like opposite to my personality because you, it's not every day that you get to do that and it's something different. So people actually did think I, that I was a bully and it was the weirdest thing for me because I'd be like trying to say, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not that kind of person. For me, it's because I've had a similar experience like that too. I did this, um, it was a, a show called Before I Got Famous. It starred Anthony Ma and he plays, his character moves here uh, to America from China and he's trying to pursue acting. And it really dealt with a lot of his experiences. And it was a very, um, I mean, it was a very well-written show, a great cast, but I was cast, um, there was an episode that dealt with his first acting job. And it just, it dealt with a lot of like kind of cliches that you go through. So my role was as Brapt and he's, his, the breakdown was he's a total alpha male. He's a frat boy. He thinks he's God's gift to comedy. And I'm like reading the lines and there was like, there was some edgy material in there, but I totally got like it where it fit with the story. And yeah. I kind of went in there like channeling like Tom Cruise and Tropic Thunder, just that kind of a character that we went in there and it was just me and this other, they kept moving us around. And then we had, um, it just worked out with me and this other guy who was like my sidekick and they're like, All right, you too. And then we got on set and I was like really kind of self-conscious about some of these lines. Cause I mean, there were some, I, I play a nasty character in it. And there were some things yeah. that I had to say that I was like, can I say this? And then, but we all had a great time on set. And then after the premiere, there were a few other filmmakers in our block. And I was, they're like, Oh, were you? I was like, Oh yeah. You know, I was like, you were that guy. Oh my God. I thought you were like, really like that. So yeah. <laughs> People need to like see the difference between the actor and the character that they play. Sometimes they associate them as the same person. And yes. that's something that they can't, they need to be able to see that difference that sometimes this person's not actually the character they play. Sometimes they are, but in most cases they're like have a different personality. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And then also, what was it like booking the role on 911? That was, it was an interesting thing because I got the audition. I'm like, what is this show 911? I, I didn't, never heard of it. And then I went in, like they, they loved what I did. I, after that, I booked it and I went home, just binged the entire show. And I was like, this is a really good show. So it, after that, it became my, one of my favorite shows. And I, I just love seeing how they dealt with the disaster on the set like how they did the earthquake and had all the debris. It was really cool to just see the uh, behind the scenes for that sort of thing. Oh, that's incredible. Aside from acting, you're involved in a, with the, the Children's Hospital and you, you, you're a part of a lot of the anti-bullying campaign. You are a philanthropist and a youth ambassador. 
Yeah, I really advocate for like no bullying. I try to keep my Instagram as positive as possible because I feel like once we have like a negative comment and people start like feeding into that, it can grow. So I just try to keep everything as positive as possible. I I don't believe like people people shouldn't be bullying. We're all the same people. And I believe that if someone is bullying you, you should either tell someone or just ignore them. Because if you ignore them, then they'll start getting mad and stop doing what they're doing. So I try to show people just like, just ignore what whoever's bullying you, just ignore it, it'll go away. Well put. And I do know, I know what you mean. And I also with your, I mean, I mean, I was bullied as a kid. And then I remembered yeah. really being in those situations where it doesn't feel good. And then you're kind and then, you know, then I went to another school and then certain people embrace you. And then you feel like there it's, I do like that there's that uh, people are talking about this more and that, you know, especially I have so much respect for you and you bring awareness to it because, you know, just growing up and, you know, you want to be accepted, you want to do good things. And I don't think anyone goes into anything wanting, you know, to be a bully or wanting to be mean. And then it's just, you know, when I hear people's stories and I, even just, you know, when I'm watching how things are portrayed on shows now, I just really like that there's layers and you have an understanding towards uh, where, you know, because a lot of our, you know, our what we endure growing up and experiences that we have, they do shape us. So I do like that there's this movement to really treat everyone with respect and to really create a positive environment for everyone. Yeah, it, it seems to be like, a, like people are finally realizing that bullying isn't good, but it should have been like seen from the very beginning that it's it's not okay to bully another person. We're all we're all humans. We're all equal. So why pretend like why say that you're better than this one person? That's not true. We're all we're all equal. We're all the same. We're all humans. Yes, we are. And no, I mean, you keep your Instagram very positive, and I notice you're quite the tennis player as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I I train a lot in Newport. So like lately, I've been training like two or three days a week up there. And it's been really good. The weather has been amazing. So, and during like uh, COVID time, it was Orange County. So it was a little, it was a little safer there. They okay. were, they had everything better. So it was a good place for me to train and everything. It worked out really well. Connor, I really appreciate your time today. And you're someone who, you know, like you said, you, know, you advocate for anti-bullying. You're involved with the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. You've been on 911. I mean, that's that's very impressive. I have seen your uh, your film directed by uh, my friend Neil uh, Demonte, who I'm actually going to interview yeah. later on today. Hilarious. You can watch that on Amazon as well. And is there anything you want to give to the audience, or anything you want to say to your fans out there? I just want to say, like, if you want to do something, just believe that you can do it. If you believe that you can't do something, then you're basically mentally blocking yourself from being able to do it. And if you want to try like a new thing, try get into it like acting, you should get into an acting class, see if you like it. And if it's something you want to pursue, then go for it. Just believe that you can do it. Set, set higher goals than you, than you think you can achieve. Because if you have those higher goals, then there's nothing that can stop you if you believe that you can get to it. Well put, and you're the proof. You've already started hit television shows, you're creating your own content and you're graduating. And right as you're graduating, you're 18 years old and you've started your own production company. Connor, you are on a roll. Thank you, my friend, for being here. I appreciate your time. And just you keep, you keep getting out there, doing what you're doing and continue this career of yours, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Such a blast. You're welcome anytime, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much for rocking out with me and Connor Dean today. You are on air with Cash. Rock on.